I was born in central Connecticut in a town called New Britain. Um, it's a factory town, so my, my parents came to the U.S. in the 1940s from Italy and they came for opportunity and um, opportunity was easiest to find in big factories and if you don't know it, Stanley Works, the big hardware manufacturer, was headquartered in New Britain and that's why many, many, many Italians came to the town and so that's where I grew up. I knew from a young age that I liked to make things um, and mostly those things centered around spaces, some kind of architecture um, and it wasn't until I hit high school that my art teacher um, pushed me towards photography and I realized with her help that I could use photography as a tool to document spaces in some way. I was really, I had become really interested in my relationship to space. Once in a, a formal program of photography at the Hartford Art School, I um, was growing up at a time where Cindy Sherman, Sandy Skoglin, Jerry Yulesman, those artists, uh, the Starn twins, um, Doug and Mike Starn, those artists were dominating the scene and every time I went into New York to see exhibitions it was that work that I was focused on and it, it aligned with my interests. Um, they were artists who were manipulating their spaces, their environment, their surroundings, surroundings and creating their own spaces, places. Um, so my work for the last 10 years or so has been focused on two series really, one of uh, these figurative uh, pieces and one of glass uh, still lives. Um, and the figurative work came first and it, it really was a number of things happening. One, my continued interest, if you look at the very early work we were talking about, the black and white work, my continued interest in the relationship of figure to space and these dramatic um, architectural spaces, these elaborate kind of baroque over the top spaces. They became more fantastical, more fantasy-like, more dreamlike, um, more about the kind of place maybe that I would want to find myself in. Um, and when I started making large ones and they came out of the chemistry, <laughs> I did not expect what I saw. So I'm shooting direct to paper and large sheets of paper and the, the paper's abilities and uh, capacity for recording certain colors when it's exposed that way just instantly fascinated me. Almost seeing something that I wasn't meant to see or wasn't able to see in any other way. Just to describe the pinhole camera a little bit more, it truly is the most basic camera you could possibly build, and I like to keep it that way. Extremely simple. So the cameras are black foam core, um, you know, duct tape, and a soda can. Part of the reason for making the work is this kind of 180 degree turn away from digital technologies. And so in the studio, the work is extremely physical. Every shot takes a, a very long time to set up, to expose, to then go, I go straight to the dark room, I process that, I come back, I look at it, and I make corrections. There might be adjustments to exposure that need to be made. There's a lot of live dodging and burning. So in a shot like this, the model is sitting there really still, and I am running around the studio for that whole hour casting shadows in certain areas that I don't want to get darker, that need to be lightened up, intensifying the light on certain areas where saturation needs to be increased. So lights are going on and off and being changed to directions and I have a beeper that just goes off and I create this whole set of instructions. I like the sweat in the studio. I like the challenge of figuring out how to make something. So uh, your, your typical immigrant story, um, my parents came for opportunity, the U.S. at that moment, um, and of course different levels of opportunity for different people, but it gave them opportunity for work, and they worked really hard, and I think my work ethic and my work is influenced, the way I work is very influenced by how I saw my parents living and working at that time. But these glass objects were some of the first things they could afford to buy after they built a life here. And so um, those first few years 
where they had nothing, um, when they finally were able to, to buy these things, they meant a lot. They were small, ordinary things that lots of people had, but they meant a lot. And as a child, I coveted them for whatever reason. I'm not sure why initially I was drawn to them, but I think because they were special and they only came out when you had company and they were on shelves behind glass. They were these things to admire and they sort of stood for my parents for that hard work that they did in order to, to be able to have these things. And so I had started amassing a collection of them, taking them from my parents, from my relatives, from family. And the interest in the pinhole camera and process and what technology was doing, the subject matter was clear to me. It had to be about this glasswork, bring these two uh, interests together. Uh, as, a, as a teacher, the great thing about teaching is you're around uh, an energy um, that is unlike anything else. And so I think what I can give my students through the analog um, um, sort of expertise, I guess you might say, that I've built the last two decades is a way to slow down. I, we hear that often from many people in many places. So it, it, it's this isn't revolutionary, but I think incredibly important for them to slow down, to think, to make, and then to respond to what they've made.